All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about acid etching. Um, we're going to be using this piece of copper here in front of you uh, as an example. We need some stamps or some Sharpies, um, so you can kind of decide what design you want on your etching, um, either with using the stays on ink pad and pre made stamps or designing your own um, artwork. We are also going to be using either acetone or isopropyl alcohol. I have uh, cotton squares, but you can also use cotton balls. I have some blue painter's tape. You could also use masking tape. These are a pair of rubber gloves. And then I have a con uh, two plastic containers here. One is for baking soda and water, which is really important. And then the other is going to be for our acid. Uh, I have two bottles here. This is a newer bottle of etching mordant or acid. And then this is an older one um, because we can reuse the acid up until it is no longer effective and turns black. And we'll show you that in a minute. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is you need to cut your metal to the size that you want. And you're going to notice that it has a lot of scratches and dirt on it. So we need to prep our metal and make sure that it is clean. And we need to tape off the side that we do not want our design on. The tape is going to protect that other side of the metal from the acid. The acid is going to eat through whatever is not protected either with tape or with Sharpie or with ink from the stamp. So I'm taking a few pieces of tape and layering them, pressing them down on the back side of my metal. And again, you want everything to be covered to protect that side of the metal. So I have some extra strips here. Um, and I'm going to need to make sure that they're secure on all the edges and then I'm going to cut off the rest of that tape because I don't want it and it's just going to get in my way. So nice even cut on both ends and you can discard the tape like so. All right and then just one final check to make sure the tape is pretty secure and all the edges are set. Now what I'm going to need to do is sand my metal. So I'm going to be using the polishing wheels. So you can look at the previous video for how to use those. I'm just going to use the yellow gritty wheel and the gray gritty wheel. So obviously I'm using them when they are clean. Um, I do in this video forget to switch it to dirty. Don't be like me and please switch it to dirty after you're done. But I'm getting the main scratches off. And the other thing that the um, polishing wheel does is it gets a lot of that dirt off of the surface. So while I'm doing this, I'm trying not to touch my metal a lot because the more that I touch my metal, the more oil is going to come off of my fingertips um, and then go onto the surface of the metal and eventually affect my etching. So I'm going back and forth, buffing it to the best of my ability. And trying to get all the imperfections out. Now it doesn't need to be mirror shine, that is not the goal, because when we do the etching, it is going to have some texture. So all of that shine is gonna go away. Okay, now I'm handling my metal just by the edges, avoiding the clean surface. So for another uh, way to clean your metal after you have sanded it, we are gonna use a cotton swab, and we're gonna use either the acetone or the isopropyl alcohol. This is gonna take any leftover residue or oils off of the surface of the metal. So I, again, I'm just touching it by the corners or by the edges and just swooping it over the surface of the metal. And it's going to air dry, um, but, it, but it's cleaning off all of that dirt. And you want to make sure that you don't leave any leftover um, cotton on it as well. So when you're wiping it, no dirt. And now I have to wait for it to dry. So time lapse. All right, it has dried. So here we are. <laughs> I'm again holding it just by the edges. Um, and now would be the time where you could design with Sharpie um, or you could use a stamp. So anything that you put on with Sharpie or the stamp ink is going to resist the metal. It is going to stay safe. Um, when you use ink, you have to use the stays on ink. Otherwise, any sort of other ink will not work. And permanent marker is the best for keeping um, intricate designs. So you can kind of choose, or you know, depending on the project that you're fulfilling, how you want to put your design on the metal. 
So I'm going to take this pre-made stamp and I want to use one leaf that I'm going to put in the center of metal. I take the stamp and I dip it into the ink pad and try to coat it evenly. Now I look towards the stamp to make sure that all the ink is on there and you can either press it or rub it against the ink pad to spread out that ink. So you want to work quickly so it doesn't dry, but then I take my metal and I put it on the top and, and layer it very carefully and then press down evenly, giving it just enough pressure to disperse that ink. So in my first go, I'm satisfied with the results. It has all the lines that I want, all the detail, it's good. If I don't like it, I can always put isopropyl alcohol or acetone on it again and wipe off that ink and have a nice clean surface. So once you're satisfied with your result, you do need to clean off your um, stamping pad or your, your pattern. Um, so you're going to take that leftover cotton ball, if you have it, add a little bit more of the isopropyl alcohol or um, acetone, and then just wipe it off for the next person. It does need to dry, and you can also wipe it off with soap and water, but the alcohol does a really great job of cleaning off that oily uh, ink off the surface. So I clean that off, I'm going to let it dry. And now I have to wait for my stamp to dry, so I'm putting everything away like a good student that I am. Perfect. So as that is drying, I'm going to show you the two plastic containers and their purposes. The empty one is going to have the acid in it. So again, this is the newer acid in the white bottle, and then the brown bottle has some older acid. You can see either one um, is available for use. So acid is a corrosive, meaning that it will go through your skin, so you have to be wearing gloves. Um, it won't act quickly, but it will irritate your skin, and it's not something you want to deal with without gloves. You also want to be wearing a mask and goggles. All right, we are going to submerge our metal, but we don't want it to touch the bottom of the dish. Um, so what we have to do is we have to take a piece of tape and put it on the back, and stretch it across the surface of our dish, just like that. So I measured it, just eyeballed it a little bit. And then I'm gonna put the sticky side up, as you can see it's sticking to my fingers a little bit, and take my metal and put it right in the middle. So the nice part is I've already taped the back, so the tape should stick to the tape. It's a little bit more secure. I'm gonna very carefully flip it and then rip some more tape to secure it even further, because it is possible for the tape to come apart while it is submerged in the acid, and it's hard to tell because the acid is so dark. So giving yourself a little bit more security is essential. Okay, so my sticky side is against the table, see that? Sticky side should always be on the open face design. So I'm gonna leave that to the side. And now I will do this part for you guys, but I wanna show you how I prep the acid. So I'm gonna put my gloves on. And again, reminder, I am wearing a mask and goggles because there are toxic fumes from the acid. And again, it is a corrosive, so it is not something to mess with. So my gloves are on, I'm ready to pour the acid. It's gonna go into the plastic container because it will not eat through the plastic. The plastic is resistant to it. You're gonna notice it's a caramely color when it's brand new. After it's been used a couple times, it does turn black but it is still effective up to a certain point. When it's really thick and black like tar, we don't use it anymore. So I want enough in my container that I can submerge my piece of metal and have it float perfectly in between um, the, the top of the surface and then right on the bottom of the dish. So again, I'm working very carefully. I don't wanna splash it, I don't wanna tip it or knock it over. Put the cap right back on. Okay, so now, I'm going to very carefully submerge my piece. So I want to take the two edges of the tape, and you have to be careful because you are wearing gloves, so it will stick to the fingertips, and flip it so that it, the design is face down. That is very important. It will get a better bite, as they say, into the design. You want to then submerge just a little bit so the acid goes on top of your design, but again, it shouldn't be touching the bottom. So just like that. And at no point have I touched the acid with my gloves. I just put the tape right on the edges, it's floating. Then I'm gonna put the lid right on it for extra security. It's gonna block the fumes, but it's also gonna help me if I bump it, it will not spill. The last thing I do 
is if my gloves don't have acid on them, I take them off and then I take a piece of tape and put it on the container. The container is going to have my name on it and then I'm going to add an hour or about an hour to whatever time it currently is. So on my watch it says 1228. I'm going to say let's take this out at 130. So an hour is usually a good amount of time. Now we have to wait an hour. It's been an hour. Okay, so <laughs> I have to put my gloves back on because this part I'm actually going to be handling more of the acid than the last time. So you will be doing this. So in my second container I have water and I'm going to mix baking soda. Baking soda is going to neutralize the acidic effect and stop the acid from eating through the metal. So I have a generous amount. I'm going to swish it around a little bit. Make sure it's nice and dissolved. And then I'm going to very carefully open up my acid bath. Taking off the lid, making sure it doesn't spill. And then as opposed to ripping it off very violently and potentially getting acid on myself, I am going to peel back one side of the tape and just check my design. At this point, you could put it back in the acid and then have it eat a little bit more if you want it to be a deeper bite. But if you're satisfied with it like I am, I'm going to very carefully take it off, look at my design, making sure not to get acid on the table, putting it over the acid. Then I'm going to peel my metal off very carefully from the tape and throw everything into the baking soda solution. I'm even going to take my gloves and rub the baking soda solution on my gloves in case there's any remnants of acid. So you're going to hear it sizzle and you're going to hear the acid die. Okay, then I'm going to massage some of that extra baking soda into the surface of my metal to make sure it gets in all the little crevices. While I do that, I will put the lid back on. I like to leave my metal in the baking soda solution for a couple minutes just to make sure that all the acid is deactivated. So I'm going to take some of that baking soda solution and buff it into the surface, uh, both the front and the back, and then take some more dry baking soda and do the same thing. You're going to see that there is a, a heavy black line. That is the acid, but it's also um, the ink coming off. So once the solution is deactivated, it is safe to handle. Um, but until then, I am not going to take my gloves off because I want to make sure that it is um, deactivated. I don't want to have my skin be irritated. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go to the sink and give it a good rinse off with some soap and water and rinse off my gloves for the next person to use. So I've rinsed it off and you can see that it has eaten through to those marks I didn't protect by the ink. I am now going to sand it so I can show you what it looks like all cleaned up. At this point, you could sand it, you could polish it, you could cut it, you could do everything to your metal. You just need to know it's a little bit thinner than it used to be. But here's my final product.